don't tell me you are enough. Uh, I had someone say that to me the other day, you are enough. I feel like people who say you are enough are always too much. <laughs> I, I, I mean, good on you if you're trying to improve yourself. Good on you if you're doing the self-help thing. Good on you if you're doing therapy. I don't do therapy because I'm worried uh, that I am a delicately balanced Jenga tower of flaws. And if you solve one problem, the whole thing's going to collapse. <laughs> the stressful way to be. Uh, I've been thinking recently, I've been doing Zoom shows. Anyone been to any Zoom shows? Yeah, I don't know if you've been in the audience of a Zoom show, but uh, from the perspective of a comedian, a Zoom show is exactly like having a nightmare about doing comedy. <laughs> You're just staring into a bright light, delivering your best jokes to silence because everyone's on mute except one person who's left their dog on. <laughs> And then it's like four o'clock in the morning because you're doing the gig in England and then you close your laptop and have to face the bleak reality of dawn. <laughs> I go for a walk. I go for a walk. I, I live in a nice suburb. Bad house in a nice suburb. I know that it's a nice suburb because there's some very rich dogs. <laughs> there are three kinds of rich dogs, I've figured out. There's three kinds. Uh, there's the first kind that looks like a deeply inbred anime teddy bear just like untenably cute and it's probably the only surviving one of a litter of 17 the others of whom were all fucked that is. second kind of rich dog is the uh, the kind of dog that looks like a statue of a dog uh, third kind of rich dog is a dog that is like well past its use by date you know just sort of a po like it's 10 years past its use by date being kept alive by like insane amounts of money just dragging its dog dialysis machine along thirty thousand dollars a day to pump oxygen back into its tiny love just let it go let it go I've uh, been thinking about feminism recently uh because i'm a feminist but i didn't become a feminist on purpose <laughs> i thought i was just a person <laughs> You know, and then you go out into the world and you go, I'm a person, you see a person-shaped hole. You go towards the person-shaped hole and then somebody goes, no, too many tits for the hole. <laughs> you're like, no, I'm a person, it's a person-shaped hole. They go, no, you're a woman. You go, no, I'm a person. They go, no, you're a woman. You go, no, I'm a person. They go, oh, you're a feminist. And then, holy oh, shit. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're a feminist. Part of a whole body of feminism, most of which you don't know and many of which you don't agree with. I have a friend who says she's a feminist. She went into a dark alleyway, saw a man doing a wee, shouted at him till he turned around and then punched him in the face for showing her his penis. <laughs> and then she wrote about it on her blog as a victory for the cause. And I feel like I might be a reasonable face of feminism, right? And I feel like she is the erect nipples on the body of feminism. <laughs> Consistently drawing focus, you know, just... My opinions are up here. It's hard to be a feminist nowadays. What does it mean to be a feminist? What does it mean when you say you're a feminist, right? I have a cousin and she is an Instagram feminist. I don't know what that is, but it seems to be mainly hashtag love your body. Hashtag love your body feminism, right? And I don't. I don't love... I'm fine with my body. All my elbows are in the right places and I probably do the right amount of poo. Can that be enough? <laughs> I just want that to be enough. So I'm going to sing you a song about feminism if that's all right with you. Yeah, all right, okay, bring me my banjo. You were wondering what my special extra skill was. It's that. Uh, not playing the banjo, I'm no good at that. It's just summoning people. <laughs> Not very feminist of me. I once, uh, occasionally I apologise on stage. I had a lady come up to me and say, you shouldn't apologise on stage, it's unfeminist. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so this is about objectification, right? Not the worst issue, very first world feminist problem where someone treats you like your, like your personality is a Rubik's Cube they've got to solve in order to get it out of the way of your vagina. That... <laughs> Not a very nice feeling. So this is a song about feminism and objectification. Don't objectify me, I'm more than just a snack. I'm more than my incredible body and my frankly excellent rack. Don't think of me as sexy, except a little bit. Like, respect my mind the most. But don't totally ignore my tits. They're right there. 
I want you to find me fine but get a boner for my mind I want to be in all your fantasies but not for you to think it's appropriate to tell me I want you to think I'm hot and dream about me quite a lot And want to bang me all the time but not enough to talk to me about it on the train line Or any other form of public transport when you treat me like an object, almost all of me will object. My mind's as full of thoughtful thoughts as my booty's full of sexy sex. Yeah, sexy, sexy sex. I won't be young and hot forever and I'm too confident to care. I don't want to know about your boner, but I want to have a sense it's there. Just a hint of it in the air. I want you to want to bang me, but I don't want to have to want to bang you. I just want to know I could make you want to bang me if I ever wanted to. <laughs> Which I don't. But if I did, I wouldn't want you to reject me or say that you respect me too much to have sex with me. Which a surprising number of people have said to me in the past and is extremely frustrating and hurtful. Between my body and my mind, I'll choose my mind, it's true. But in mind over matter, let's not pretend that matter doesn't matter just a little bit too. Age and death will take me as age and death take all And as with all man's prideful works my amazing tits will one day fall <laughs> From Rome to California no city built can last So take the time to raise a glass to everybody's passing us Ideally, consensually, or at least unobtrusively, and not in a way that implies their autonomy comes second to your desire. When you treat me like an object, almost all of me will object. My mind's as full of thoughtful thoughts as my booty's full of sexy sex. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you, Marcia and Spacer.